Hi everyone, it's Desiree. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me for another video. So today I'm going to be showing you how I made these vellum laminated cash envelopes. I am going to do a whole tutorial on this from how I got this onto the vellum and then how I laminate uh, for, for these. So yeah, I'm going to do that. I had been wanting to do the cash envelope system for a while and I saw these being sold on some Etsy shops and I love the way they look. I just knew that I was going to have to buy a bunch of them and I didn't want to spend all that money on them. So I figured I would watch a few YouTube videos and kind of figured out how to make these on my own. And I think they came out really nice. So I'm gonna go over how I created these, where I got all the stuff, all the stuff I got off of Amazon. So I will have all this stuff linked down in the description. But you basically need a laminator, which I have one that I got off of Amazon for about like 30 bucks. There's some cheaper ones there, but as long as it is a laminator that can heat up to like a five mil, then you should be good. This one does three mil and five mil. Uh, you need some vellum. This is probably the only thing I didn't buy off of Amazon. I got it at Michael's because I had a coupon. So I'll have that link too, because I have a link for that. I uh, have a Fiskars, um, paper trimmer. You can find that in stores also with a coupon as well. I got a ring punch off of Amazon for like $10 I want to say. And then I uh, have all of these laminating pouches. I have a 5 mil, which is a thicker. I also got matte. You can do this tutorial with the matte, with the glossy, all of that. I prefer the matte because I like the matte look. There's no glare and shine when I'm filming. So I just prefer the way that that looks better. It is more expensive though to get these sheets. Uh, and I will have what I got linked down in the description. And I did invest quite a bit to get a good pack of these, but I'm glad I did because I have plans to make even more envelopes in the future. So I have a bunch, um, which is good. But then I also have this three mil. So I use a five mil and a three mil to make these envelopes. I've seen other people do it different ways. I'm just gonna go over the way that I like to do this and the way that I found is the best and like most durable way that I found to do this. I've gone through a lot of different envelopes. Um, some of them were major fails in how I put them together and some of them were coming apart already. So I kind of learned from my mistakes. I'm hoping I'll be able to share like the best way to make these so they'll be able to last um, a while. But yeah, I'm gonna go over all of that. But I have a three mil mat as well. This one, I will have linked the one that I bought. It's currently out of stock, but I'm also gonna link another option that I plan on buying since this one is out of stock and I need more of this because I didn't get a big order of that one. Okay, so those are all the items that you really need for these envelopes. Um, the next thing I'm going to go over is how I use Canva to make this template and I'll show that on the screen, on my computer screen, how I make this so that way and also the font I use because I really love this font. It, there's a specific font in Canva that I use um, and yeah, I'm just going to go over how I made the vellum part and then I'll go over how to laminate after. All right, so I am in Canva and I'm just gonna go to create a design, custom size and just a regular letter size eight, uh, eight and a half by 11. And I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. Go to elements, I have a line. I'm gonna change the color because I don't want it to be black when it prints. So I'm picking one of these gray colors and then I'm gonna, make the line thinner so two or one i'm doing two i usually do one but for this video it's a little hard to see so i'm going to do one i'm going to make this line 6.5 6.5 is where i'm going to get the length for this envelope for the top and then for the bottom so i'm just copying and pasting i'm using my commands on my keyboard to do a uh, copy and paste I'm gonna bring that one down a bit. I'm gonna copy and paste another line with commands. This time I'm gonna make it vertical. 
make sure you're at 90 degrees when you do this that'll be the straight line and then I'm gonna go down to 3.2 because I'm making these envelopes 3.2 by 6.5 that's the measurement I'm using but you can use any measurement you want but I wouldn't go any smaller than that to be honest so yeah making another copy just so I can have an outline of a box I'm just using this as a template so I plan on cutting these out later on but I'm going to copy this whole thing or select the whole thing so I can move it up a little bit and then I can fit two more boxes onto this sheet okay so I have copy and paste another one and then I'm going to copy and paste the third one down and I'm just lining them up just so that way they're kind of similar and close together so I'm using as much of the paper as possible and I'm using as much space as possible on this on this um, vellum that I plan on printing on. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna add the text onto here, which is to the left. There's a little text box that you can add. So add a text box. I'm gonna move it up so that way, it, and then you see like these little numbers that pop up on the side. Um, that will help to guide or add the make sure it's centered so I'm gonna pick this Halimim that's the font I use and I like 35 but again you can use any font you can use any um, size that you want this is just the one that I like to use so I'm centering it now you can see it's super centered everything matches up I'm copying and pasting all the way down this is nice it gives you all these guides and lines and stuff to make sure you're centered and um, everything kind of lined up which is super helpful so I'm just copying and pasting all of these and I'm going to change the um, oh, the wording on the last two that one doesn't look as centered though so you just adjust it super easy um, this one I'm going to change to gifts and then the last one is going to be holiday decor those are the these are the three new categories I'm I wanted to add into my system okay so that's all set then I'm gonna share download I'm gonna change from PNG I want the PDF print because that's like the best for printing and then that's it you download it and then you open it up and print it through your however your print settings are make sure it's on the best though all right, so since now we have the vellum all figured out, it's printed, I let it dry a little bit. Once it gets off the printer, I don't immediately go and try to cut these out because sometimes the ink can be a little bit wet and you don't want it to like smear all over your vellum because you'll definitely see those that all over. You want it to be like a nice, nice and clean to laminate. So since I added these lines as a guide, it's really easy to cut this stuff out. I try to cut like over the line so that way I don't have the line after the fact because I really don't want the gray line showing through. Sometimes it does and it's not a big deal. That's why I did a lighter gray and not like a thick black line so it wouldn't be as noticeable if I didn't cut it off all the way. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to cut this with my trimmer. Use those lines to help as a guide to cut off all this excess. Oh, you know what I realized? This isn't perfectly straight over this way. So I'm gonna go this way, just to be on the safe side and cut each one off um, on its own. But this is this part's pretty self-explanatory. Since I made those lines, I'm just gonna cut along them until I have all of them cut out. But I'll cut the first one on camera and then do the rest off camera. So I have gifts. Because I just started this envelope and yeah, definitely need to start putting money in this one for some gifts for some birthdays coming up. Okay, so this one is all cut out. So I got gifts. So I'm going to cut out the other two next. 
Okay, so all of these are cut out. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this on because it does take a bit to heat up this one that I have. And I'm gonna make sure that it is on the five mil since I plan on using five mil and three mil together. I definitely want the hottest temperature when I'm using the laminator. So on mine, it does have like a little button right here that says five mil and three mil. So I'm just gonna click it onto five mil. I've actually accidentally turned it on to three mil and didn't realize it. And then when I went to laminate, it it just, you can tell immediately it didn't laminate it, right? Uh, but if you put it on five mil, it's hot enough where it will laminate to more like a, the sturdy lamination that you want, which is good. I'm gonna put these aside since I'm done with these. And the next thing I'm gonna do, this is the fun part. And for me, I like my envelopes to uh, have on the top a little bit of lamination on the top where it's um, adhered together. And I don't like to cut completely across. Some people do that. They'll cut like completely across because I've noticed when I've done that, sometimes it works, but sometimes the vellum um, starts releasing from the lamination when you've been opening them and pulling from the tops. So I feel like having just a little bit of the lamination on the top helps to prevent that from happening because I haven't had any issues with these since I've been doing it this way. So it's a little bit extra in steps, but I think that by doing that, these are going to last a lot longer, which is better. Because, so you, you know, these are time consuming to make and that's why they're so expensive on those Etsy shops because they are just, they just take a while to make. They're very custom. And um, the end result's beautiful, but yeah, I want to make sure that they last long. Even though I know how to make them and I have the supplies, I don't want to try, I don't want to be remaking envelopes over and over and over again. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the three mil. It's very easy to tell the difference between a three mil and the five mil because you can just feel it. This one is a lot thicker. This is matte. This is matte. This one is a glossy one, which you can obviously tell. So um, yeah, because they're all out of the packages and thankfully it is very easy to tell what's what. I only have one piece of three mil matte laminating sheet left. Like I need to buy more. So when I was doing this, thinking about doing this tutorial, I'm like, oh my gosh, I only have one left. I cannot mess up. So I'm hoping I don't mess up in this video because then I won't have any more three mil matte laminating sheets to do to use i'm gonna put this aside a little bit because it's still not ready um what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna cut off this top part the part that is attached to the top like that keeps it all together i'm cutting it off because i'm going to be using this in a different way than how it was intended to be used so yeah just cutting off the top part just so it's not connected anymore and i can take it apart okay so now that part's off and I can separate these pieces now like this, okay? Before I do that though, I'm gonna cut these down to size, to the size that I would like them to be. This is the part that I don't wanna mess up because I don't have any more laminating sheets to mess up with or to yeah, fix, my, fix my mess ups. So um, the, I made these 3.2 and again you can make these any size you want i'm thinking in the future i'm going to make them a little bit bigger on the top but honestly this is a good size it fits the dollar or the money um very nicely there's enough room to slide them in and out with when, when it's like six and a half inches across and i feel like there's enough room on the top too where it's not like super short and also, this is the size that you can get the max amount out of that vellum, out of the laminating sheets. I'm able to get three out of these. If I go any bigger than what I did on those vellum sheets, I would only be able to get two out of them. So if you're trying to maximize your supplies, definitely this size is a good size to go with. Um, so I did 3.2 on the height over here. So for this, I'm actually going to cut it just a little bit bigger, like a little bit. 
bigger because this yeah I just want a little bit of an overhang from the vellum which helps to get that um, laminating part on the top so hopefully it doesn't split in the future that's my goal is to not have it split okay this is the part always makes me like nervous to do so I'm just I'm just gonna cut it here again go with your measurements but go just a little bit over so you can have an overhang on the top okay and then this one for the width I'm gonna go six and a half for this part, I do try to go the exact size um, since I'm going to have this laminating part over here closing off the envelope. Um, I don't need it as much as I do on the top to go over. So this is going to be six and a half on the dot. Okay. Now the next important thing to do, which you could do this at the beginning, but for me, I just tend to do it at this point of um, when I'm, I'm making these envelopes is you want to flip these two inside out on the, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be honest on the matte ones it's really hard it, and very easy to mess this part up and not realize that you didn't do this part because on the glossy ones you can totally tell like this side is glossy the inside is matte so you know which side is which on these they're both matte so definitely make sure you turn them inside out because we don't want, we want the, when you turn them inside out, these two sides inside here won't stick together. And that's what makes the pocket that we need for this. So now I'm gonna take this one and I'm just gonna stick it on top here. So you can see like that little bit of overhang, that's, that's what I like to have. And then it's almost the same width so that's good. So that's gonna be the gift one. I'm gonna set that one. I just kind of like set it aside um, and then I'll, I'll work on that a little bit more. And then I'm going to just do the same thing. Cut this down to a little bit over 3.2 and then six and a half on the other side. All right, so I got all of these cut down to size. So I'm ready to put them now into the five mil laminating sheet. I'm not cutting the top off like I did this one. This one's going to stay as it is, but I'm going to take these and kind of line them up again. So that way they are yeah, straight on the bottom. I have a little bit of overhang on this one. I didn't cut as much on that one, my bad. But that's okay. It should be fine. I feel like there's enough. Okay, so I'm going to Line these up in here as straight as possible. Okay, so I have that one there. That one's good to go. The next one, I'm gonna do it at a different in a different position. So this one, I'm gonna put here, but I'm gonna need to make sure I leave enough space for what I need to cut off so that way I can punch the holes. So you don't wanna put it like super close up here because you need to leave, unless you want just envelopes that are on their own with no punches. But if you want the punched end, you have to keep enough space. And then I like to put, make sure I have enough space on this side too for the punched end for this one. This is how you'll be able to get three of these to fit in here and really maximize the amount of um, supplies you're using. Because, like I said, these sheets of laminating, the matte ones, are not cheap. So, you definitely don't want to, like, waste them. Try to get every bit of use out of them that you can. Okay, and then this one's going to go in here. This one I can put close to here. Because I plan on... Like, you can cut right through that one. Okay, so those three are in nicely. I'm going to go back to my laminator, which now it's ready. I don't know if you can see the, the red light or the green light is on. And I'm going to stick this in this side first, the, the closed end first into the machine. Now that it is ready to go, just kind of like slide it in. And it'll catch eventually. There it goes. Okay. 
and I just kind of hold it here because I don't want these to uh oh you can't see that I'm holding it but I'm holding it on the end just so that way it doesn't fall over and these slip out definitely don't want that to happen while it's getting laminated And there it is coming out there and I like seeing it because it always comes out like darker like more bold and the lettering once it's laminated which is really nice Okay, so that is out. It's really, really hot. So I'm gonna let it cool down just for a little bit right here. I do plan on passing it through the laminator a couple more times, but after I've cut these out, because I feel like up here on this one, it's it didn't get like pressed down as well as I would have liked it, but I'm going to, like I said, run it through the laminator once I make a couple of cuts on here. And this cools down pretty quick, so I can actually work with it now. So I'm gonna grab my paper trimmer again. I'm just doing rough cuts right now. I'm not doing like exact ones. I'm making sure I'm not cutting into here, but also leaving enough room for over here. And in this, I'm gonna be honest, I just eyeball it when I'm doing this. I just know like that is more than enough. And I'm gonna cut down the middle here since I'm gonna to have to separate these two anyways. So I'm just gonna cut down the center. And then I have those two separated. Okay, so now let me pass this through the laminator again. And then on this one, I don't know why, but I just always flip it over and do it this way. Kind of go different directions, so make sure it is getting laminated um in all the areas i guess better to be you know sure that it's laminated and stuck together but yeah i really like this laminator i was using one one from work um, i had borrowed it just to see if i could make these if it was possible i didn't want to have to invest in a laminator until i knew if it, this was something that i was going to want to do and I was using, I think it was the, at work we have the Amazon Basics laminator. And that one was good. And that one's very affordable. So um, definitely check that one out. But I feel like this one is even better. It's really nice. It does have like a little paper trimmer right here, which is cool. But honestly, I don't really use this. I think if I did these cuts, which I kind of want to make some envelopes with a diagonal like peekaboo type of envelope. I think that would be cool. I would use these because... My paper trimmer doesn't have those type of angles on here. Um, it also came with a punch, a rounded corner punch, which I haven't used that because I have a corner punch, which is something I forgot to show as something that I use for these. So I'll show that right now. Uh, this right here, I got it at Hobby Lobby. I'm sure they have it at all kinds of craft stores, but it's just a rounded punch because these corners are sharp and it's definitely better to have them rounded off so you're not like poking I was poking myself before when before I rounded them and it kind of hurt so <laughs> I like rounding them off which I'll show in a little bit how I do that okay so yeah these look like the the lamination um, is on there a little bit better so that works cool This on the bottom and sometimes like another thing that i was doing when i was making a bunch of these i would just let me just i don't think i need this anymore i'm gonna turn it off um i would stick because i was making a ton i made like 20 of them or something at once and so i would put like a stack of books on top just to flatten them out even more because sometimes when they come through here they if you're not paying attention like i wasn't paying attention because i was talking it kind of um, bends a little bit, but that'll help to like flatten it out when it comes out. But I can run it through the laminator again and, and do that and it'll fix it. So for now though, I'm just gonna go with 
the more precise cuts to um, get these to be ready for the envelopes. All right. So when I say precise, I mean, I'm trying to be precise, but I have my own way of doing it on my paper trimmer, like certain lines that I use on here um, that I just, again, I eyeballed. It's just trial and error, to be honest. I'm going to try my best to give some measurements, though, uh, of, of what I'm cutting off. But from here, you can see uh, the vellum part right here. So I use that as a guide to cut. Okay? So, so that way I can make sure I'm straight. And on my, on my uh, paper cutter, I have these lines right here. So this is, oh gosh, is this half? This might be half an inch. I'll measure it though. Um, I'm using this line right here. I, I'm just using these lines as guides and that's how I know where to cut. All right, let me just double check the measurement on this. I believe it is though, half an inch. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is I just want half an inch of this extra lamination on the bottom. That's all I want from where the vellum is to um, the end so then I can punch holes here so that's why on mine I just use this line right here to help me line it up and then also to cut it it's really hard for me to do it on camera though I'm not gonna lie because uh, I can't see very well okay so that looks like it's half an inch and again I lined it up here because my lines my cuts aren't perfectly straight so I'm trying to make sure that this is straight, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's going to be the punched edge right here. Now for the cuts on the side, I just try to cut, I'm going to cut one side first and then I'll measure the other side. Again, that's just how I do it. And I try to cut on this side, just don't cut into where you see the lamination right here. You don't want to cut in there because if you do, you'll open up the envelope and you don't want that. Okay, so I'm just going to trim off a little bit on this side. Here, let me line it up in front of my face first because it's really hard for me to see. And since I cut the bottom off, that part is straight, so I can use that to cut a straight line over here. Okay, so that part is cut. I just have like a little bit on the side, which is what I want of the lamination. Okay, now this side... Let's see, where am I going to cut this thing? I'm going to cut... Let me measure mine. I'm telling you, I'm not exact, but I kind of am like... Somewhat in the ballpark of like where I need to cut. Okay, so this one, I'm going to cut... Let's see, no, that's too much. Okay, so I'm cutting to, what is this, six and three quarters? Yeah, six and three quarters to this line right here. Uh, I'm going to cut that off on the side. Okay. Again, it gives me enough lamination on the side, which is good. I mean, I actually can trim it off just a little bit more just to get a little excess off. That's why I like eyeballing it. Because they don't have to be super perfect, but, you know somewhat similar this one is almost the same size so that's good okay all right and then this one on the top i'm just gonna cut close to actually let me measure this one. okay so this the my kind of my my um, template envelope is about three and three quarters is where I'm gonna cut. So, oh, the three one is always fun. Three and three quarters is here. About here. Okay. And then now I can open this up because I cut into that lamination part. And again, I have like a little bit right here, but I know for sure this is not going to open up into the vellum. So that's what I like. Okay, so there's the pocket. Let me put the money in here just to test it out. 
fits nicely in here. Yep. Like so. It's good. It's not opening up, so that's good. All the sides look good. All right. Now, the last thing I need to do, well, actually, I have a couple more things to do. I need to punch it. So these, I'm going to grab my punch, the ring punch right here. And I'm going to set this to the personal size. Um, so that way I can put it in my binder. So that is already set and ready to go. Line it up to this little piece right here. And then punch. So that one is now punched. All of the punches are on the bottom. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this punch right here and round off the corners. Because again, like I said, these are super pointy. Um... Yeah, I just don't like how pointy they are and they're they kind of poke. So I'm gonna take the R this radius right here, this seven. I'm gonna use that one for the bottom corners. I like to do a bigger radius on the, the bottom section. I also like to flip it up like this way and punch because then I can see, make sure that the um the envelope is all the way in the correct position. Sometimes it can be a little bit off. And I'm just gonna punch these corners here just to finish off this envelope okay now these I don't want as much of a rounded corner on the top so I'm going to go to the smaller radius which is four and I'm going to punch these with the four like this just a little tiny rounded edge but it's just better because it's not going to poke my fingers like that all right so that is the envelope ready to go okay now i just have to do the rest all right so let me get rid of all this i'm still waiting for this oh it's actually ready so i can run these through one last time to make sure they are good to go and i'm actually going to get some books so that way i can Put some pressure down on them and make sure they're like super straight this one isn't as like not straight these look a little bit bendy um but like i said it's easy to fix that okay so yeah i'm just going to have this i'm going to run it in this way because i feel like it's bending this way so i want to flatten it out this way so i'm just going to run it in this way and then i have a heavy book so i'm going to put it underneath this book And then after this, I'm gonna put them in my envelope so you can see how they look. And there, the finished product. Okay, so I'm just putting pressure down. I'm gonna let that do this thing for a few minutes. I'm gonna go get my binders, turn that off, and then I'm gonna put these envelopes into the binders. All right, so yeah, they look a lot flatter, so that's good. I'm gonna take these three. And here's the binder that I've been, um, that I have these already going, that just needed these really pretty envelopes. So I'm just going to change these out because I have these three. Um, this one is holiday decor. So that one. That is holiday decor. I only have 20 for that one. So now I can fill it. With this in here. There's holiday decor. Let's put that in there. Fits perfectly in here. Nice. Okay, I have one more tip that I actually forgot. I knew I was going to mess up in this tutorial. Like I said, I kind of made it happen, I think. Um, but one thing that before you punch your holes, because I was noticing, I was like, why are my holes so off? Like, these are practically the same size, but the holes are not lining up. And I forgot one thing that I did. I took the time to find the center of this. Instead of going off of this 
little guide right here, I took the time to make sure that um, all of these, let me set this to personal. These were more in the center because you can tell like I'm a little bit off on this side. There's not equal spacing in between here. So over here, they're more equal on the sides and more centered. So um, what I did was I took a quick measurement. So this one is about six and three quarters. And then I just kind of found the middle, which I feel is about here. This is like the center right here. And I took a, I know this is like super detailed. Sometimes I'm telling you, this is why these are so finicky to make and time consuming and why they're so expensive to buy. <laughs> but I'm gonna take this marker and just mark with the, like something that'll erase really easily. And I use that as my guide for punching. Instead of using this as the guide, I use that as the center. So when you stick it in here, you see, if I stick it in here, it's off. Like that little line, Oops. it's not in the center of this piece right here. So I just go over that piece, center it. Sorry if you can't tell. But I'm centering it all along this piece right here instead. And then that'll get me more centered of a punch. I'm not going to repunch it. I don't know if I should repunch it. Should I? Let's see what happens if I repunch this to like the right ones. Okay. Just to see if it gets um, the right. So I'm already going to have to redo this one, which is fine. Oh, yeah. No, see, it's super off right here. So I feel like now that I mean, it's totally messed up now. But if it's, it's going to be more centered now. Before it was like off to the side like this, which is not centered. Again, you can learn from my mistakes. See how like off it is right here? But once I move it this way to the correct, since now I centered it with that line, now it's going to be more in line with the other envelopes that I made before. So yeah, that was a fun little mistake that I made in this video. I'm sorry I didn't remember that so that I could show you and I didn't make that mistake, but just wanted to make sure you knew and then you could just rub off that little mark, um, that that's how I made sure that everything was centered properly. And I could still use these actually. I plan on just, you know, sticking these in here and then they will fit better in here. Because again, look how they're more off to the right with that first punch, but on this one, they're more centered. <laughs> okay, so don't follow that little guide. That, that'll that mess you up. Um, other than that, now everything is good. I figured out everything. I, f I feel like I've, I've mentioned everything that could happen or could go wrong, and you obviously saw something that did go wrong, so that's good to see. Um, so hopefully you won't make that same mistake that I made. Um, but yeah, that's basically how you make those envelopes. I hope this video was informative and you're able to make your own if that's what you plan on doing. I really enjoy how they look after the fact. I'm going to put a link for the, because now I definitely have to buy more of these, more of that three mil matte uh, pouches. I'll put a link of the one I plan on buying since the other one I got is out of stock. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos, please hit that subscribe button and I hope to see you on the next one.